Learning check four. And this one's kind of a tricky one. I'll walk through it. Um, it's useful, I think. So here are two compartments, blood and plasma, separated by a membrane that allows for diffusion of gases. So like oxygen, for example. Um, so given this information, your partial pressure and oxygen concentration. So this one is concentration. The other is partial pressure. Remember, those are not always the same. We'll, we'll see why in this case. So here are the questions. Do your best to answer, but also I'll go through them. So which way does oxygen diffuse? You should know this one. Partial pressure gradients are what matter, right? So that's left to right. Down it's partial pressure gradient. That's the answer to B. Which way is oxygen moving in terms of concentration? You figure this out, right? Here's concentration. It's going from low to high concentration. It's going against this concentration gradient, but that's not what matters. Um, why is that the case? So this is the part that your explanation probably isn't the same as what I'm gonna give. Where is the oxygen in the blood that it's not in the plasma? What's different about the blood than the plasma? The blood contains red blood cells. The plasma doesn't. Red blood cells contain hemoglobin. Oxygen is bound to hemoglobin. When oxygen is bound to hemoglobin, it does not contribute to the partial pressure of the system. That's why concentration is so high here, despite partial pressure being low. So let me actually show you that here. Here is the, the same thing here, but let's look at what happens. That happens. Why is this? Let's look at what's happening inside. Um, in the plasma, oxygen is just um, dissolved, right, in the plasma. Plasma is aqueous. Oxygen does not dissolve. I have a high solubility. It does not dissolve super well, not very soluble. So there is a low amount. When hemoglobin is present, oxygen can bind to hemoglobin. Four oxygen molecules can bind to each. And this is going to allow us to have high oxygen concentration despite the low solubility of oxygen in um, plasma and water. And this is how most oxygen is transported in our blood. This is why, why this matters. Once bound to oxygen, sorry, to hemoglobin, oxygen no longer contributes to the partial pressure of the system, which allows more oxygen to keep diffusing in, which is really useful, right? Um, remember that partial pressure um, actually, don't know if I actually said this. Pressure of a gas is because of the gas molecules like hitting against the walls of the container. Um, that's what pressure is, right? Things hitting walls. So partial pressure of, of oxygen's partial pressure is, is due to that. If it's bound up to hemoglobin, it can't be exerting that, that pressure. It can't hit um, against the walls of the, of the blood vessel. So pretty cool, huh? So we're gonna talk about how oxygen first is, is transported in circulation. Um, however, we're gonna do carbon dioxide eventually as well. So here is our, our tissues. So this might be um, lung tissues, cells of the lung or the interstitial space. Um, we're just gonna look at, for this picture, this is a capillary, right? This is the capillary wall here. Here's a red blood cell. Um, oxygen is carried primarily bound to hemoglobin. That's in the red blood cells. This is 98.5% of oxygen. There is a small amount, about 1.5%, of O2, it's dissolved in the plasma. It doesn't have a great solubility, so it's not a whole lot. I'll come back to carbon dioxide, but just to give you context in, in this situation, there is some for, for carbon dioxide, some in the red blood cells. There is some in the plasma that is going to be in the form of H 
CO3. And then there's going to be some CO2 also dissolved in the plasma. So at this point, it just makes sense to think about that CO2 is carried both in the plasma and the red blood cells as well. It's actually opposite in terms of like proportions. Most of it's in the plasma and less in the red blood cells. So let's talk about hemoglobin. We have some already, and we're going to um, here just look at the structure. We will do um, relate hemoglobin binding to partial pressure of oxygen in the next video. Um, so here is your red blood cells. Each red blood cell has many hemoglobin. Hb is hemoglobin. Well, uh, proteins, right? These are proteins. The cell is packed full of them. Here is a protein. Our proteins here. Alpha helices, beta sheets, a lot of alpha helices. Um, there are four subunits of hemoglobin. Protein. This is quaternary structure, it's called. So tertiary is the folding. Quaternary means that there is more than one subunit bound together. The only reason this matters for our purposes is that it can bind four oxygen molecules. Each of these alpha and beta chains can bind one, these beta chains that then um, form a, a globular structure. So this is where oxygen binds. There's four of them. This is what one looks like. This is a heme group, so iron in the middle here. This is able to bind one oxygen, but there's four of them, right? This then makes oxyhemoglobin when oxygen is bound. You know these terms already. We did deoxy, you know the deoxyhemoglobin is when oxygen is not bound. We did this in the blood chapter. This is the form when oxygen is bound to hemoglobin. So like I already told you, this um, is kind of what we're looking at here. Oxygen is coming in from the lungs. We're going to load oxygen into our blood, right? And most of it gets loaded into the red blood cells. So this is 98 0.5% in the red blood cell bound to hemoglobin, making oxyhemoglobin. About 1.5% is going to be in the plasma. So this is oxygen loading at the lung tissues. Oxygen is then unloaded at the tissues of the body, right, where we need to use it. The, we'll come back to this in the next video the rate at which oxygen is loaded or unloaded um, primarily onto hemoglobin, right? Because that's where most of it is. It's gonna depend on the partial pressure of oxygen, which we've already talked about what that is in the lungs. So we will look at that next with our, um, with some nice graphs. One more thing to just keep in mind um, and you did, there was extra credit opportunity with this um, back a while ago. You're still welcome to do the same extra credit related to sickle cell anemia. Look at the blood slides. Um, it's an example of a single base mutation that changes protein structure. Here is changes in protein structure of hemoglobin to ultimately actually change cell structure in this case and result in the sickle cell um, structured red blood cells that can don't carry oxygen as well and get caught in the bloodstream. Um, so this is sickle cell anemia, one type of anemia where oxygen is not being delivered as efficiently as ideal. 